Our nation, it's time for the segment we call Getting to Know Your Red Black, presented by Robillard Hearing Centers and the Clock Tower Brew Pub. If you don't know this guy, you haven't watched football in the nation's capital, especially if you're a Carlton Ravens fan. Number 19 for your Red Blacks, Nate Behar. Is it Behar or Behar? Get the proper pronunciation for me now. Let's clear that, get that out of the way. Behar, technically. Bahar. But I've heard, it, I've heard it pronounced differently from other people too, so. I actually met somebody named, named Behar, yep. who came to Fan Day, yep. and they pronounced it Behar, so. This life, point, at this point, who knows? Life's about a series of decisions. I want to go back in time to a decision you made <laughs> mm -hmm. to go to Carlton U when it was a brand new program. And you had an opportunity to go to the Western Mustangs. Yeah. Did Laurier recruit you? Yeah, everywhere in Ontario, yeah. most of the country, yeah. So it's mortal sin you didn't go to Laurier, my alma mater, <laughs> go Golden Hawks. But you went to the Ravens, why? Because it wasn't just about football, it was about an opportunity to lead and build something special. And yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, we uh, we had the chance to um, to do something that I'm probably not going to get to see done in my lifetime, which right. is start, start a new youth sports program, start a CIS program at the time. Um, and it was too good to pass up. I mean, yeah, right. the, the, the opportunity to not just play for that many years, but be a leader, um, develop something, build a culture. Yeah. I think that was the biggest thing for me is I didn't want to just kind of be a cog in somebody else's machine. We wanted to be a part of building the whole thing. And I believe yeah. in the coaching staff's vision. Where does that come from for you? Is it your personality is it growing up how you were raised because mm -hmm. most guys at that level will be saying I need to go where I got to be seen mm -hmm. so I can get my piece of the pie um I don't know I think I think I was I still probably am but I was yeah. definitely a confident uh 17 18 year old so I think you I didn't better be <laughs> right so I don't think I was ever really afraid of like I never really let playing time be a decision maker yeah because I was kind of you're going to get the playing time. yeah I was figuring yeah. I was gonna I was gonna outwork everybody and okay. make sure that was gonna happen so then it was what's the next thing for me like where can I develop the most and a big part of it was development too like knowing that we had seven full-time coaches and yeah. we're full-time OC full-time receiver coach all that stuff was like was second to none and then of course the the extra stuff, the the building the program or anything was just too hard to too hard to say no to, and I, I was I was drawn to it with my leadership. I think. Now we travel forward in time. You remember the Ottawa Red Blacks after your stay with the Edmonton Eskimos? What's that like been uh, that experience been like for you as a Red Black? Um, it's exciting. I mean, it's yeah. so it's so nice. Um, life is just kind of like kind of serendipitous for you. Yeah, a little bit. It's like I was. I don't even feel like I'm in season, like I'm at work. There was times, you know, somewhere else where the only reason I was sort of in that city was for work, that yeah. football started to feel like a job. Okay. Um, but when I'm here, you know, every every minute of downtime I have, whether it's just walking over to local or, or Joey for a bite, it's like yeah. there's people I know and love everywhere I go. Um, there's people I can reach out to when I'm when I'm bored and in a heartbeat and it's not right. just not just the team, which is nice. I mean, as much as I love my team, it's great to be able to expand and see, see some new yeah, people every once in a while. Yeah. There's an overlap in terms of your social circles where you get value as a football player, 100%. but you get value as a person as well from the game. Yes. If you didn't play football, mm -hmm. what would Nate be doing for a living right now? Um, I probably would have. I probably would have gone full into my music. My music. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah. My dad's a my dad was a music producer in Toronto for a little while. I went to, okay. perf I went to performing arts school. You did actually? Yeah, uh, before high school. <laughs> that's uh, things that's we good. learned. I know. So I was. Uh, I've always been a guitar guy. Um, I have a guitar, guitar and piano in the apartment right now. Okay. Um, getting my getting my. You fingers Bruno back. Jam at all? I, we haven't played, yet. We okay, because he yet. plays a little bit. And Brad does too, actually. Really? Oh yeah. I know. That'd be cool. Get, get the band together. What kind of music are you into then? Um, I'm blues. Pretty heavy into blues. Really? Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimmy's, about, Jimmy's yeah. more of a rock guy though. Rock, you talk rock about buddy blues, guy, yes. Down Child Blues Band. Mm -hmm. If you want an album that you really want to listen to and think really good, Down Child Blues Band, Live at the Alma Combo. Okay. Uh, you have to search for it, but it's yeah. a fantastic album. Anything that Down Child does, because they were a Toronto blues band, okay. the Toronto blues band. Okay. So check them out. Um, so a musician, uh, after the game. Yep. Are you going to segue into music? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, there's a lot of things. Got some things on the on the on the radar on the plans. Yeah. You know, as the, hopefully they try to get to be able to build out through the off seasons as I play. Okay. Um, but I mean, there's I. I know my coaches. Uh, pretty much everybody that's coached me has always asked if I wanted to coach, and I yeah. think I like to say that I'm gonna. Something watch. tells me you you do it, but yes. you want to step into a new chapter. A little bit. I kind of want. I think I'd want to be away from the game for a little bit, but yeah. coaching is something I've always loved. Um, okay. So I can see that. I can see that in, in my future for sure. But we'll okay. see. We Pre-game meal. Oh. It depends. I've been uh, I've been partial to the the mad radish, the really? fired up chicken. Okay. Or fi yeah, fired up chicken. You know, it's a little. Yeah, I try to stay away from stuff. things like roti. Right. Because about right. the third or fourth quarter, <laughs> it affects your forty yard dash. Yeah. Um, your favorite player growing up? Did you have one? Uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really similar to you in terms of life balance. Yeah. 
He's terms a, of the football oh, yeah. player, but more than just a football player. He's a lot. Because his big thing was that he made sure he finished his schooling mm -hmm. while he was still playing pro, even though he had money in the bank. And then he traveled every offseason and saw the world. He's yeah. a idol. Three things you love about Ottawa. Um, just summers in general. Yeah. Like, uh, however you want to put that. The weather, the, yeah. the weather, the patios, everything. Okay. Um, the people yeah. um, and the balance of being able to be in nature so easily, but while also, you know, if you could be downtown or in the market, you feel like you're in a city. That was, yep. that was that deep. Yeah. That was deep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, number 19, your Red Blacks, uh, Super Nate. Uh, guy does a great job representing the Ravens and the Red Blacks. Uh, soon to be a legend. Eventually, you're already a legend because of the catch, but definitely a legend in terms of the sports lore here in the nation's capital, which is the perfect segue to our contest brought to you by the Clock Tower Brew Pub, and that is name the legend. Thanks. Absolutely.